Welcome back. Still to come, more Final Fantasy. And that bird with cats. But first, back to B Company. Yes, sir. In this level of Bad Company 2, Marlow has found himself cut off from the rest of the squad. It's cold, it's in the Andes, he needs to take shelter to stay warm and survive. Marlow, I don't know if you can hear this, but if you want to survive, find some heat, make a fire. That should warm him up a bit. Snaking down the mountainside, Marlow encounters Russians. They're preventing him from getting into cover quickly, so he needs to take them out. Making your own doors is an effective way of getting in quick. Listen, I got some empty men with me. We're gonna get you out. All right, this is a small problem. I'll, uh... Hey, that's fire. Marlow's got to fight through the last of the Russians and make it to the rooftop for extraction. Earlier, we saw UK PR Roxy take a bunch of journalists to Tokyo to play Final Fantasy XIII. Let's rejoin her. OK, so it's 2.30 in the morning and I'm jet-lagged. I can't fall asleep and it's annoying. My problem is I can't fall asleep. Um, I feel really jet-lagged. The jet-lag is actually catching up with me now. Um, but I'm not going to moan too much because I've had a really fun day. I need to sleep. If I don't, I'm going to be really grumpy. But enough of that. Tomorrow, uh, we all get to interview the developers. So we're going to meet the producer and director. And um, it's going to be my first developer interview. So wish me luck. <laughs> so night night for now, guys. Bye bye. Here's the view from the interview room. So I'm here now with Kotaka-san and uh, Toriyama-san. Do it again, Kotaka-san. 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 Toriyama-san. I'm here with Kotaka-san and Toriyama-san to talk about uh, Final Fantasy XIII. So my first question is... Thank you very much. Thank you. So I just did my interview and the guys were really, really friendly and... Um, and um, yeah, it was really good. It was really good. I can get used to this. <laughs> I can't believe how quickly it's all gone by. I've, I've had a really good time. I love Tokyo. All good things must come to an end and we're back at Narita Airport. Just a few days ago we came here really excited to come and see Tokyo and now we have to go home. But, but it's cool. We've had an awesome time. Not as good as the time I had with Shigeru Miyamoto and some sweets. Anyway, time to conclude our Final Fantasy review. In this battle, we'll see Snow and Hope take on a Velocycle flanked by Psycom aerial snipers. Shiva! As the Velocycles are fairly resilient enemy, summoning Shiva, Snow's Edelon, will speed up its destruction and deal with those snipers too. Show them how it's done! Now the Shiva sisters have joined the fight. It's easy to knock the snipers into a vulnerable, staggered state and get them out of the way. Just before their gauges run dry, we'll hit the button that instigates Gestalt mode. The ladies team up to form a rather awesome motorbike. Let's ride! 
Using the simple button commands listed at the bottom left of the screen, Snow and his Lady Cycle can let loose with some fearsome icy attacks. <laughs> cool them up! For a finale, he'll pull some donuts to create an impressive frozen vortex. Just like I saw in Sainsbury's car park last December. Way to go. Thanks. Now we can finish off the VeloCycle without breaking a sweat. It's fair to say that in terms of production value, Square Enix have outdone themselves with Final Fantasy XIII. The in-game visuals, the stunning cutscenes, and the superb soundtrack combine to create an awe-inspiring RPG experience. It's also fair to say that when you strip away all of that gloss, you're left with a game that lacks most of the exploration and a sense of freedom that can make RPGs so appealing. Fallout 3, this ain't. However, the best combat system in the series so far and a plot that's fairly bonkers but masterfully told make up for the lack of depth and the result is a title that's truly worthy of the series. We'll give it a 9 out of 10. OK, let's return to our review of Battlefield Bad Company 2. Oh, yeah! There are 15 air, sea and land vehicles in Bad Company 2's multiplayer modes to master. All bring their own unique abilities to the battlefield. So we thought a little roundup of the vehicles we encountered during our time on the multiplayer maps was in order. Buckle up, it's going to be one hell of a ride. First up, we start small, the humble quad bike or ATV. Now, this vehicle allows one driver and one passenger on the back facing behind. The driver can't use a weapon, only the passenger can engage in gunplay. Plus point, it's speed. It'll get you straight to the action fast. Downside, help! No armour! Next up, we have helicopters. Now, these babies allow you to get a bird's-eye view on the battlefield. If you're the pilot, you can use the front-mounted weapons. Some choppers also carry squad members who can use side-mounted guns. Pros, its aerial superiority can really swing a battle by destroying buildings quickly and squashing troops from above. Cons, there can be a bugger to fly and are easily taken down by rocket fire. A little easier to fly is the UAV, or Unmanned Aerial Vehicle. You control these remotely with images sent back to your control panel. Pros, it allows you to see where the enemy is hiding from a safe distance and it makes use of laser tagging for artillery strikes. Cons, they can be easily taken out by troops on the ground. So the big guns are out with the tanks. These vehicles carry a driver who can use the front-mounted cannon as well as a top-mounted machine gun for teammates to use. Some of the other armoured vehicles also have side-mounted machine guns for mowing down advancing troops. Throws the ability to tear through buildings with its shells and also crunch its way through objects in your way. Cons, the rear of the vehicle is vulnerable to C4 charges being set by engineers and also three hits with an RPG and you're toast. One thing's for sure, the team who takes control of the vehicles normally takes control of the game. The online multiplayer side of Battlefield Bad Company 2 was the highlight of the game for us. The game's launched with eight maps, with two further maps downloadable with a code found in the box. Tactical destruction of buildings, either to take out enemies or clear a path, really deepens the gameplay. There are loads of rewards to collect, which increase your rank up to a maximum of 50. As you level up, you'll be awarded additional weapons and skill upgrades. The rush mode, played here on the DLC map Valparaiso, has two teams of 12 pitted in a battle to push the enemy's line back by securing marked areas. 
Conquest, seen here in the White Pass Laguna Alta map, is also a 24-player game, which sees teams attempting to raise their flag in three different areas. Squad Deathmatch pits four teams of four against each other in a frag fest. And Squad Rush, well, you've all played that for yourselves now. Dog tag kill, excellent. It's a seriously well-packed multiplayer lunchbox that Bad Company 2 delivers. Verdict time is Bad Company 2, a Modern Warfare 2 beta. Well, we went back to the campaign mode on Modern Warfare 2 to see how they match up. Let's just say 1-0 to Modern Warfare. We didn't connect with the squad enough to get a real sense of team. With no mission mode, it also lacks single-player longevity. The multiplayer, with its plethora of vehicles and strategic destructibility, is frankly dazzling, though. Not quite Modern Warfare 2, but a damn good substitute. Nine out of ten. Sometimes people are just people, man. Next time, God of War 3. Ta-ra!